I actually get this question all the time in my inboxes and uh, today I decided to make sure that I'm going to give all the information that I know about HIV and I'm going to base this on a Kenyan practice, the Kenyan healthcare practice. So I'm going to give as much information as possible and in case maybe you find this video and you find that there's some information missing, you can add that in the comment region. But I'm going to give you all the possible information that you definitely need should you maybe want to pursue a testing on HIV or you just want to know how that usually happens. Now in this video, I'm going to start off with how you get tested uh, in case you turn out to be positive all the way to when you start receiving your ARVs drugs. Now. The first thing, we go to testing. When it comes to testing, we have several stages. Now, not actually stages, you have several ways that you can get tested. And the first one is you can just uh, go to a pharmacy or go to a healthcare center and buy the self-test kits. These are the kits that you will take with them home and then you test yourself with them. Then you have now the second uh, method where you buy, you go to a hospital, you get tested using the algorithm that's placed by the government on how you get tested for that same HIV. Now, first of all, let's get to know how home testing usually takes place. Now you go get that kit, you take it with you home and you're going to get three results. The first one is a positive, the second one might be a negative and the third one is an invalid. Now, in case it turns out to be a positive result, that's not conclusive. The next thing that you're supposed to do is to go to a healthcare system. A panel of testing is done on you to make sure that all the errors that might arise during the testing are all alleviated to arrive at either a conclusive positive or a conclusive negative or an, a repeat or a test that should be referred or deferred to another time. Now, in case you are negative, you actually don't need to go to a health center in case there is a need for you to go and uh, confirm. But uh, we have invalid whereby you don't find any line after you put your blood in that kit. Uh, you don't find any line or there's a control line which is supposed to check the integrity of the sample and the kit in case that does not appear. One, you'll have either to go by another kit and repeat the same or you can just go to a hospital and make everything easier. They are going to do that for you. Now, let's go to now the hospital-based testing. This is whereby you find this an algorithm, which is currently now working. But uh, we have another one that uh, WHO is trying to introduce. It's in the pilot stages. In case that is uh, approved, it will be the one that will take over from the one that's currently being used. And I'm talking about now the stages of testing in Kenya. In this video, I'm going to explain the one that's currently working right now before the one that's in, in the pilot stages, which I'm also going to come and explain about. But first of all, let's get to know. Now, let me explain the one that you find when you go to a hospital. This is the one that's uh, recommended. It's in the policies and the guidelines. So this is how it usually goes. The first one is you go to a counseling some sort of counseling. You get cancelled and then uh, you're told how or, how or what you're going to expect in the tests and then you go to now the testing stages. So after counseling, you usually go to the testing station whereby you're going to start off with a kit that we call Determine. Now the person testing you will take that kit out and uh, they will prick you and get blood and put in that kit. Now this one will check for the P24 antigen in the blood, meaning that that kit is antibody based. So it will check for the antigen in the body. What will happen here will be, in case you're positive, you have that HIV uh, in your body, it will just detect that, that will be a positive. In case you don't have any of that antigen, it means that you don't have that HIV at that moment. And uh, that does not mean that you're negative at all. Okay, you can be uh, completely negative, but you don't actually rule out the possibility of you being in a Windows period, whereby uh, the antigens are not enough to give the correct results at that moment so meaning that you can just come after another three months get tested to be a hundred percent sure that you are not negative you are not positive for hiv now we have uh, another third result which is now the invalid in case there's no control line or there's no line at all which means that uh, there was an error during the testing or the kit is not actually functional they are going to repeat the same test. It does not mean that now you are HIV positive and they want to confirm, no. Now, at this point, when you're negative, everything is dropped at that point. You're given an, a negative report and uh, in case you are positive, now you proceed to the next step. Now, there's a kit that we call first response. Usually check for HIV1 and HIV2. 
Oh, I forgot to tell you that um, in determine is usually checked for both HIV-1 and HIV-2. Now let's go to the first response. This is after you are positive. The uh, determine was positive, so they take you to the, now the second step. This says for checking the antibodies against GP41 for HIV-1 and GP36 for HIV-2. In case that you have, let's say, HIV-1 in your blood, you're going to have GP41 antibodies in, the, in your blood. And uh, because the kit is antigen-based, it will check for the antibodies in your blood. So I'm sure that's now understandable. What happens is when you get an infection in your body, your, your body or the immune system will produce what you call antibodies to fight whatever foreign is in your body. Those antibodies will be what we are going to test here uh, because in case you have them, it means that the body knows that there's something foreign, which is now the HIV, the specific TP41 for HIV1. So the body knows that this HIV, and now we can use that information to conclude that you are HIV positive. And uh, in case that you now have determine, which was positive, meaning that you had P24 antigen, that's a protein on uh, the HIV uh, particles. Now you go now to the second step, which is now fast response that, that checks for either GP41 or GP36, depending on the strain of HIV. It actually checks both because you have a slot for both of them. You usually give three lines. You have the first one. Uh, the first line is for HIV-1, we have the second one for HIV-2, and we have the third one for the control. That control line must always be there in every kit, even if it's determined or home-based kit. Now, um, now you're positive, uh, you now proceed to now the, the subsequent steps. In case you are negative here at this point, we call that a discordant result, meaning that your determine was positive, but now you're going to now the antibodies are not there. What usually happen here is, one, they can take the samples and send for either ELISA or molecular testing, or they can just uh, defer your testing to another two to three months, so that by the time you're coming back, your body will, will already have uh, recognized that you have those, um, the foreign bo bodies, which is now the HIV viruses, and uh, by that time, the antibodies will be enough to be tested and give a positive result. If there was a confirmation that um, you, your determine was positive, your first response was uh, positive, that's a confirmed positive. So the next step will be registering you to now start receiving ARVs, which is now a step that I'm going to explain. You've been confirmed that you're now positive. They are going to refer you to a facility we call CCC comprehensive care center whereby you're going to get a comprehensive test for your body uh, everything to do with hiv or other diseases that are unique to people with that condition and um now we get to go to now a system that we call nascop we have nascop we have some other systems that are in private practice whereby you don't want to have your data in the public uh, sector so you can just go to a private sector and uh, get you know all that so you are, after being confirmed that you're positive you're going to be registered and uh, the first thing that they do they take blood from you um surely put in a, a vacutainer purple vacutainer and this one will be used to check how many virus particles are there in a milliliter or a microliter so whichever method that you're using at that point so that one will now tell them uh, where are you going to start your medications because you have several lines uh, of uh, drugs because sometimes for example you might by the time going uh, to a hospital maybe you uh, viruses they have been progressed to a point where they require aggressive uh, reduction in your body so you're going to get we have several types of ARVs I think we're going to cover that in a, another video the types of ARVs we have heart which is uh, highly aggressive, they will reduce all the viruses and try to revert uh, the actions of the, that HIV viruses to make sure that you don't get to AIDS. You are just remain and now you have HIV infection, you don't proceed to AIDS. After every six months, what will happen is you just go get your blood drawn out. It's taken to a CCC or a molecular based testing platforms whereby they are going to check how many virus particles you have in your blood. And uh, this one will inform the uh, ARVs that you're going to be given. Remember, uh, you started by getting tested and uh, they, were, they confirmed that you're positive. Now you've been registered to start now receiving the ARVs uh, drugs. And um, this is now 
in uh, you're put in a database whereby they start now monitoring how effective the drugs are in you. So they need to keep testing you and giving you the drugs that are now working on you. In case you are given drugs and they are not working on you, uh, now what usually happens, there will be a correlation between all the drugs that you are taking and the viral load. So they check whether after now taking those drugs, the viruses are reducing in your blood. If they're not reducing, they now, pro they now proceed to the next uh, line of drugs. We have several regimes. We start with the lowest one going all the way up. So like I said, we are going to cover that in an ARV topic. I'm going to make a video on that. It will be very comprehensive in case you want to delve into that. So they'll just go up, 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 up to a point where they'll feel that now this is working on you. If everything now is constant and working on you, yeah, that's where you're going to now completely stay. Um, after every six months, you go, get tested. The viruses are checked against your previous reports and see whether they are being reduced. Now, this is where now adherence comes in. If you adhere to your drugs and they are working well on you, they're going to reduce viruses all the way down to a point where even the antibodies will start depleting in your system. And uh, this is a point where you're going to find that in case you so happen by mistake that you get tested at this point, you're going to be negative. You high chances will be. Even your reports will uh, indicate LDL, meaning lower detectable levels from the PCL platforms. That's what usually called the viral load system. In case it's in that case, one, your transmissibility levels usually reduce, meaning that you your chances of transmitting that to another partner usually reduce. It's highly discouraged at this point to uh, have sexual contact that's not protected. Yes, I don't want to get into this very much, but uh, in case maybe you're interested in me getting to this topic into the details, because we have so many controversies where you find that one partner is positive, the other partner is negative, and they want to continue living together. Or maybe someone wants to marry someone, but unfortunately they are positive how they can live. We can just decide to opt to make a video on that in the future. So I'm not, I'm going to skip that directly and go to always make sure that you swallow your drugs um, faithfully so that uh, whatever will happen in your body will be, the viruses will be so low to a point where even your immunity will come back and you just live a normal life as if nothing is going on. Now, we have something usually call CD4 cells and uh, I, dis I discussed that in a previous video whereby you find that we have CD cells. CD4 cells, they are immune cells that are highly targeted by HIV. And in case your HIV is not treated, they are depleted, meaning that uh, those cells will just go low, 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 low to a point where you will start now becoming uh, susceptible to even simple infections like influenza. Okay, it's not a simple infection, but you'll, you'll, you're going to find opportunistic infections. Like you see, in case maybe you get to a point where now it's AID, this, but there is a difference between uh, HIV and uh, AIDS. It's a difference. Now, if you have HIV that's not, not treated, the pathological effect will now take you to AIDS. AIDS is a syndrome. Now, in this AIDS, this is whereby you're going to find those what you call um, opportunistic infections. Uh, like, for example, Kaposi sarcoma. It's an opportunistic infection. If you have watched the video all the way up to this point, it means either we are talking about something interesting, you're gaining value, or you just like us, you want to hang around. In which case, you are so much welcome. So make sure that you like the video, give us a subscription, and share to those people who will be interested in what we are doing. And I have so much loading for you, so keep around, so make sure the bell is on.